Hey, my amazing artists, welcome to our second activity of Dot Week. This activity is pointillism pictures. So before we can get started talking about what that is, let's say our learning target together. I can create art inspired by a book. So remember, all of our three art activities this week of Dot Week are inspired by the book, The Dot, by Mr. Peter H. Reynolds. That's the book that my friends in first grade are reading this week. So what is pointillism and what does it have to do with the dot? Well, pointillism is a style of art where an artist uses only dots to create their picture. They use small little dots of many different colors to fill up an entire picture. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? We're gonna do a little bit of two different types of pointillism just to try them a little bit today. But before we can, I actually have two artists who like to use dots in their artwork that I want to talk about first. We're going to look at their two styles of art and then kind of compare and contrast how they're the same or maybe different and try their styles in our artwork. If you're ready, let's go take a look. So before we meet our artists, again, pointillism is a painting technique that uses small dots of color in patterns to form a whole image, such as the two images that you see here. Our two artists that we're going to learn a little bit about today are Mr. Roy Lichtenstein and Mr. Damien Hurst. These two artists like to use dots in different ways. For example, Mr. Roy Lichtenstein was an American pop artist during the 1960s that liked to use what were called Ben Day dots, named after the illustrator and printer who created it, Mr. Benjamin Henry Day Jr. It was a printing process that used dots, as well as other shapes, lines, or textures, to develop a color or optical illusion type effect. The dots could be small or large, and could be closely spaced, widely spaced, or sometimes even overlapping. Many comic books during the 1950s and 1960s used Bende dots, as well as four specific colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, to create secondary colors, and shading in an inexpensive way. Lichtenstein was inspired by these comic, comics and would use enlarged and exaggerated bende dots in his own paintings and sculptures. Next, Mr. Damien Hurst. Mr. Hurst is a contemporary artist whose recent works called The Veil Paintings is a series of 24 large paintings described as neon gumball tone paintings exploding with color. These different colors, though, were not neat little dots, but more spots. Mr. Hurst said, I thought, I need to go back to my original feelings about color and forget order. I need to celebrate color and chaos in a big way. He relates his paintings to arranging flowers and looking at what colors look nice to each other. It almost creates visual candy. Hearst's veil paintings are a looser, messier evolution of his original paintings called spot paintings, which were rows of multicolored dots in identical sizes, and they meant that they looked kind of machine painted. In this way, he started out very similar to how Mr. Roy Lichtenstein liked to make his artwork, but then became very much messier with his dots and spots. So now that we've seen how two other artists might use dots in their own artwork, it's time to try pointillism for ourselves. Let's go ahead and grab out our art supplies. and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna need to try our pointillism pictures today. Here are the art supplies that we're gonna need for our pointillism pictures. First of all, you want two white sheets of paper or one blank sheet and one coloring page like I have here. Again, if you don't have any coloring pages, you can use the second blank paper to make your own in a moment. That's why I have an eraser, pencil, and my black Sharpie there in case I need those. You also are going to need your markers. We're going to use those for a nice, neat kind of dots, just like Mr. Lichtenstein did with his Bendai dots. If you want to do it two different ways, like I'm going to show, you might also want to grab out some paints. I have here some gauche paints, but you can use any sort of paints for the more messier kind of painting like Mr. Hirsch did. So please go grab at least two sheets of white paper or a coloring page and your markers. Once you have those, bring them back here and we'll get started creating. All right, my friends. So again, 
you can either start with a coloring page if you have one. If you don't have one, you can make a coloring page real quickly. Again, easiest way to do that, draw it out with your pencil first and then trace it up with your Sharpie. Or I like to just freehand it with my Sharpie as well. So maybe I'll make some nice kind of pop art with a word like art. Here's my art pop art that I could use. Now I'll go ahead and grab out my markers. Like I said, the first way I want you to try pointillism is with nice, neat kind of dots, just like Roy Lichtenstein's Ben Day dots. So I'll go ahead and grab out a marker, any colors I want to use today, and I want to start dotting. Now, because this is a nice, neat one, my dots don't want to touch. So I'll space my dots out as I start to color in my A of art. I'm not pushing hard because if I push too hard, my marker will get hurt. You're going to find that pointillism is the type of art that takes time and patience to create really well. As I'm going around being careful, I don't touch any of my dots together. And I'm slowly filling in my letter A with as many dots as I can. Now again, there are different ways to do Vendee dots. For example, I could use more than one color in this A and overlap my colors together to blend them. Or I could just choose to use one color like I am right now. But for this first part, I want you to try making your dots not touch. And again, be very gentle with your markers. Don't push so hard that you smush the tips. I'm gonna go ahead and work on coloring my whole coloring page in to show what it can look like when you're done trying pointillism. Here is my first way that I decided to try pointillism. Again, I spaced out my dots, trying to make it look more like Roy Lichtenstein's style of Ben Day dots that I used. Now, with this one, like I said, it does take a lot of patience and a lot of time to fill in areas. If you looked while I was doing mine, I know it was fast, but I would fill in small areas at a time to help myself. If you find that you want to try out this style, maybe draw a picture that is smaller or use a smaller piece of paper to draw out your image or try small parts at a time. And remember, you can take breaks in between colors or different areas. So that was our first way of trying pointillism. Now, if you'd like to try a second way with me, like I said, I'm gonna also do a similar style as Mr. Hurst now, his more kind of messy spots as opposed to dots. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch from my markers over to my paints now. Have water and a little bit of paper towel. This time, I'm not going to draw my image out first, though, because like he said, using a grid and having order is not what we want. We want to make it a little bit messier. I'm still going to create a picture, though, and I'm going to start out first getting my brush wet and dipping it into my paints. Now, this time, my dots are not going to be spaced apart. They're going to be kind of messily splotted on, and they're going to be touching. I'm kind of twisting my brush as I go to help make that splat effect. I'm not pushing too hard on my brush because, again, I don't want to hurt it. And this time, I can also mix colors as I go. So I'm going to start drawing out my picture using my nice splatting kind of dots or spots, as Mr. Hurst might use. And as I'm going along, let's see if you can figure out what I am painting. All right, how many of you guessed Miss Greta would paint a rainbow? Of course. So there's my nice kind of spotted, splotchy painted rainbow using a similar style to Mr. Hurst and his idea of using dots or pointillism.
So again, these are two different ways to achieve a similar idea that is the style of pointillism, either by using small controlled dots or by using bigger kind of splats and spots to create your artwork. Either way, if you want to try either project, or you could even try both and try to make the same thing in two different ways, whichever way you would like to try practicing pointillism. I hope you have fun doing your dots and spots.